turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. So my friend Deanna has some incredible species of turtles, so she's turning her entire backyard into an absolute oasis for them. So watch how with an idea and a little bit of Dan power, we're able to turn this pile of dirt and two big old stock tanks into a beautiful three-tiered waterfall and stream. So the waterfall and stream are going to be made using the dirt that was piled up from sinking in these two giant stock tanks. And so what I did was I went ahead and kind of created the tiers and the general shape of how this waterfall and stream were going to go. So you can see the layout of the two giant stock tanks, all those ducks and uh, the muddy water that they created in those ponds. And you can see where I fit in that waterfall box. Scooching the little duck aside, you can see all the rocks that we had prepared and gotten in order to build the stream and waterfall. Everything really roughly in place. You see, I have the waterfall box. You can kind of see how the water is going to come down. I put this piece of driftwood here just to get an idea of how I want things to look. To provide some filtration and to act as the basis for the waterfall, I have this aquascape filter falls right here. This is going to act both as a filter and an area for us to build the stream and for the water to first come out of. It's going to be the basis for the waterfall, then it'll flow down into the pond. I got some materials from Home Depot, gravel, rocks, and bricks. And with this, we were ready to start building. In order to have the waterfall spill into the stock tank, into this pond, I needed to raise up the area. So I got these big bags of dirt for literally $2 each just to add material and build up the area so the water could effectively go over the stock tank and spill into it. I basically just had to raise the elevation of the entire stream and give myself a blank slate to work with. So I raked everything out, made it flat, and I tamped it all down. This was super important to prevent any settling in the future and anything from moving. So now came the problem of the pond. They were filled with water to keep them in place, but the ducks used them as their own personal paradise. And so the water was freaking nasty. There was algae, all kinds of bird poop in there, all kinds of duck waste. So we have to pump out all of that water because like I said, I want a nice blank slate to work with. So I wanted this thing to be clean for the turtles. I didn't want to risk any pathogens or icky nasties in this water. So we drained it out and began cleaning it. While it was draining, I started adding bricks and just generalizing the structure of how I wanted the stream and waterfall to look. You can see I have my original waterfall rock there. I even trenched out the back from where I was going to install the plumbing and put the pipe and whatnot and bury it in the future, right back there. And so as the water was draining, it was about time to do that. So what I did was I got the bulkhead that came with this, cleared out the area of any debris and cleaned it with some alcohol. And then I forgot the rubber washer, so I had to take this apart and put it back together. But with a rubber gasket and screwing this on, it created a nice watertight seal, basically like a bulkhead. So this there we go. Now we have this like threaded fitting for the plumbing for the actual tube. I tossed on a hose clamp to make sure it was nice and secure as well. After the pond was done draining, I stuck another hose clamp right onto the pump. That way the hoses wouldn't come off the pump or come off the waterfall filter. You can see I'm again adding more structure. I have that second tier, that little piece of wood down there. I'm starting to put rocks where I think I want them and the ducks are playing in the water. But most importantly, I have the structure pretty much done. So I've got my three tiers and I've got my main waterfall rock, the little piece of driftwood that's going to be a fun sub-level, and the main waterfall up at the top. Once I was happy with these three tiers, these are the main facets of the waterfall, I was ready to put in my liner. And so I dug out this kind of area because I decided that the way that this rock was shaped, I kind of wanted to create this like cool kind of like centralized cavern almost. And so I dug it out and put the liner in. Now we're using a blue PVC liner. Normally I'm heavily against PVC, but my friend Deanna wanted this blue liner. She wanted it to kind of fit and match with the blue stock tanks and make it kind of look good. So blue is what we went with. In hindsight, I probably should have used a rubber liner and put this on top of it, but eh, hindsight's 2020. Next, I was starting to fill in with rocks and get everything placed. You see, I'm framing the main fall and the second fall because these are two of the most important things to get certain as early as possible so that way I can start foaming. So you see, I have my main waterfall rock done. I'm starting to frame in and fill in with the rock work and whatnot. By this point though, we were losing daylight. And so this was the end of day one. Now on day two, I'm ready to start tucking the liner and continuing the progress of getting this stream built. So here's a fun little spot and a mistake that I have made in the past and that I want to prevent you guys from making is that if you take your liner, just kind of shove it here, eh, everything looks fine. Theoretically, this is tucked away, covered with dirt, everything's fine. But you've got this little channel that goes from here, say that water's coming down here, it travels to the back, it goes right down this little crease, this little crevice right here, and it'll come straight down and out if you're not careful. So you kind of have to be careful with your folds and fold it backwards and kind of manipulate it so that way that doesn't happen. Just got to be smart with how you use your liner. Bo, come here. 
you gonna mm -hmm. you gonna help baby in order to build up these areas and stop this liner from slipping and falling down i'm gonna take some topsoil toss it down here and build this area up. So that's what I did. I take this $2 bag of dirt and dump it there, dump a bunch of material. That way the liner has something to lean against and it doesn't just fall and slip and allow water to get out. To make everything look more natural, I'm also using these smaller river stones that I got from Home Depot and you just kind of fill them in with the larger rocks. That's how you make things look natural. You just fill in the large rock with smaller and smaller gravel and it all ends up tying together really, really nicely. As an added challenge, here's this electrical box. So I had to move things over to allow this to swing freely and have access to it. I also use this giant piece of driftwood in order to line the side and hold everything together because we didn't have enough dirt for that side of the stream. And it actually ended up looking pretty darn good. I started framing the main waterfall again and making sure that everything was looking good and it was time to cut the excess liner. After I cut it, we started hiding the edge a little bit. Deanna loves these fake succulents and it goes with her vibe that she wanted for this whole pond. So the pump wasn't able to get all of the water out. So for the next like hour I had to by hand suck up all of the icky nastiness at the bottom of this freaking pond. There's algae down here, a bunch of leaves from some plants, and pretty much a lot of duck poop. Just a whole freaking lot of duck poop. So I'd have to suck it all up, empty out the container, and take it back, hook it all up, and rinse and repeat. This is your pond now. And then I accidentally blasted Deanna with some water. After all of the water was out of the pond, the only thing that was left was all this muck and mud, but this is a wet dry vac, which means it works when it's wet and dry. So I'm able to use this to just suck up the rest of this mud. I'm not gonna lie guys, this was like the most satisfying part. One of the most satisfying parts I should say of the pond build was literally just vacuuming up all of this nasty duck muck at the bottom of this stock tank and cleaning it out. Once I cleaned the pond, I was able to step in it, which means I was ready to do the waterfall. So I washed out some gravel that I could have on hand until the water ran clear. That way it wouldn't be all icky nasty when I put it in the waterfall. I added the biological filtration, which is just this giant bag of lava rocks and put it into the waterfall filter. And then at this point, I have my little gravel, my larger gravel and my larger river rocks ready. And this waterfall is ready for foam. So this foam is gonna stop the water from just going behind the rocks and it'll fill in the gaps and expand as I add more gravel and things to make it look natural and it'll force the water to basically flow over the rocks and over the wood rather than behind it. So I put on these extra small gloves and this expanding waterfall foam that we also got from the hardware store, twisted it on and enjoyed the second most satisfying part of waterfall building, the foam. I was filling in all of the cracks and whatnot. Again, this is to make sure that the water does not run behind these rocks and everything. And this waterfall foam is black, so it's meant to blend in with the liner, but because our liner was blue, I had to be extra careful with how I foamed everything. Once you start foaming, you really can't stop. So I had to just keep going, keep rolling through and forget entirely about filming in order to hide as much of the foam as I possibly could before it expanded and solidified. And so next thing I knew, everything was pretty much completed. My foam had expanded. You can see it kind of bubbling out, but that's really easy to remove. But all tiers of the waterfall were foamed and I was ready to start filling up the stock tank just above the pump. So that way I could test how this thing runs, make sure there's no leaks and see how it runs with water for the first time before we finish hiding the edges of this stream. And there is little Bo keeping guard of the waterfall right before we kick it on. After plugging in the pump, I have this pipe exposed because we're gonna be adding a filter in the future. So otherwise, I would just bury all of this pipe, but the water filled up and boom, we've got water. It's gonna be dirty because it's all this orange stuff, but whatever. Cool. As we let the waterfall run overnight, Deanna informed me of a leak. And so the next day I decided to show her exactly why it was leaking. So <laughs> so that's because if you build this up the wrong way, mm -hmm. it's still gonna leak, right? So this was down here yeah. like this. And so it's all coming out. So you can build this as much as you want here. Yeah. It's still gonna come out. And this is why I keep the edges open so we can look for leaks mm -hmm. like this and one. Uh huh. And even though it's like, well, wh how is that water getting all the way over here? It finds a way. Water finds a way, life finds a way, Jurassic Park, whatever. All we have to do is fold this up and in like this. So now it can pool up and come down here as much as it freaking wants. And I'm going to just take this and tuck it over so that way the water just heads back down and doesn't leak out 
down here, which is where it's going now. Once the leak was fixed, we just had to do some more edge work and boom, the entire project was completed. I know that you can see blue in the riverbed and behind the waterfall, but that's what Deanna wanted. Normally we would cover that with rocks, but she said that it added to the kind of oasis vibes that she wanted. That piece of wood I experimented with, I haven't actually used wood before for a fall, but I'm excited to see how it holds up. And the centerpiece for the waterfall is doing exactly what I wanted it to. It's kind of this bowl shape to come directly and splash onto the wood because Deanna wanted some noise. The second tier is a small piece of wood and I love seeing the sheer of waterfall come down. So I was super excited to add that. And for the final tier, we have this rock that fit perfectly on the lip of the stock tank. It really worked out. Even the duck was super impressed with the project. Now I didn't want it jumping in there and making a mess, but this little one came just for a quick little drink and I was not too upset about that. You can see to hide the foam, normally we would use rocks, but Deanna had all of these fake plants and things that she wanted to use. And I thought that that was a great idea. It looked pretty darn good. Normally I would use live plants again, but this is what she wanted, not what I wanted. And I gotta hand it to her, these fake succulents actually look pretty good once they're all put in. They were really effective in hiding the sides of the liner and hiding all of that waterfall foam. We just stuck them right into the foam and it worked great. On the opposite side, I was able to use rocks and gravel to hide the liner and everything. And she added a bunch of little succulents and made it look really good. Again, down the middle, we have this blue that's showing because she wanted it showing in different parts. Normally I'd hide it all, but I think it still looks pretty good. This giant piece of wood was really useful in the project by holding the wall. On the opposite side, we're gonna end up having to put more dirt there, but I was running out of time, so that'll be for another day, but we gotta add some dirt there to keep it stable, maybe add some plants up in there and add some rocks at the top, but we ran out of rocks, did what we could, and I think we made the best of what we had. There's still more filters and a whole lanai that needs to go over this pond until it's done, but for now, I think we did a pretty good job with the stream and waterfall. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Do you like turtles? Do you not want these turtles to starve? Then become a member on my Patreon today. Patrons get access to all kinds of exclusive content, including behind the scenes photos, bonus videos, turtles when I have them available, and so much more. Direct message me with all of your turtle related questions and I'll walk you through how best to care for your turtle or just come say hi. Join my Patreon today and get access to over 300 bonus content posts.